Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing. Today's video is about this BRX head, but also some piston technology stuff. So just a little bit to, you know, more stuff to give you information about, just different things to learn. If you're into learning, this is gonna be a pretty cool video. So let's go ahead and talk about what this head is and the advantages and disadvantage of it. This is a Brodix BRX. Now it's got my Weingartner Racing logo on it because I've ported it. That's it right there. It comes from Brodix. This is a, you could think of the SR20 if you're familiar with that head at all. It's the ASCAS version of that head. So what an SR20 or this BRX is, it's 20 degree valve angle. The valve itself's moved in a different location than it is from stock. Um, the runners themselves are raised up quite a bit from stock. Um, and that's what it is. So it's a really, really good performing head. Typically, um, they flow out of the box. So just out of the box, at least on my bench. They go about 485. So this one's actually probably the smallest one I've ever done. So um, this one actually flows about 500. I'll show you the flow sheet in a minute. It flows around 500 CFM. This is going on a pump gas 582. Now the runners themselves, I did not try to make them larger at all, although they did get a little larger. If you, my bigger versions flow way more like 525, but um, this one I really wasn't trying to make larger because again, it's just a pump gas 582. It should be a really good deal for what he's wanting to do with it. This should be really nice. Um, good, good head, as you could tell. So this thing really should do well for what he's doing, but I didn't make the port so much larger. Now I will say there's some options done on this head that will make it better for what he's doing in case you ever wanted to know. So the head itself comes with a 2400-1800 exhaust valve, which is much smaller than what you're used to because usually you get, you know, like a, say a usual big blocks, you get a 2300 and a 1880. Well, this exhaust valve is a lot smaller and the intake valve is quite a bit bigger. Uh, like I said, they flow about 500 CFM, but that's just peak. If you look at the low lift flows, which I'll show you in a minute, at 400 flows 330. I think at five, it flows uh, 400. So it's a really, really good head. So great for that. Now, here's some of the options that are different. If you were to order the head itself from Brodix, typically what they have is they have this seat material on the exhaust. They always do, and they put a 55 degree seat. On this deal, because it's a um, street deal, I don't want a 55 degree seat. This is actually 50. So I probably could have got away with a 45, but 50 would be fine for as much running as he's gonna do. Um, 55 degree, great for racing. However, it's longevity, longevity isn't very good, so hence we do a 50. On the intake side, usually I put a 55 degree valve job. This one's a 50 for the same reason as the exhaust. This is different though. When you order the heads itself, on the intake side, usually they have a cast iron or ductile iron seat. This has been replaced with the same material as that. And you might say, why? Because those are titanium valves. Now these are coated, so they could run on the ductile iron if you want, but I feel better about having them on those. So that's another option. The other option, which you can kind of see here, is the chambers are CNC softened. So you can see that around them. So let me, I might train into the head a little bit better to get a better view. There you go. They are CNC softened. And the reason for this was two reasons. One, um, it really makes it better for detonation resistance because you have a flame front that goes further out and gets some of these end gases burnt so they're not causing detonation or pre-ignition conditions. A huge advantage for that. Uh, the second reason I've heard this one is, and I don't know if this is true or not, but it does kind of make sense. If, if they can make a little bit more power because if you put two flat plates together and then you try pulling them apart, it takes a considerable amount of effort to pull two flat things apart. So having this dish here helps make a little bit more power. I've heard that. I don't know if that's true, but it kind of makes sense. But biggest thing is detonation resistance because you think of a street driven deal. I want, we for sure don't want any detonation problems. So that really does help out. The disadvantage of having the chamber soften like this is typically the chambers on these heads as they come are uh, about 100 cc's, which is really small for a big block. Because typical big blocks, and I'll show you a set here in a second, are about 119 cc's. So these are good 20 cc's smaller from the factory. However, after doing this, softening and such, and the valve job, they end up at 106 cc's, which is a little bit bigger, but again, detonation resistance. Now, honestly, you can get them down much smaller if you wanted to without doing the softening. Like, you can get them down probably to 95 or so. But in this case, this is how it's going to be. It kind of works out for its compression, which we'll get to in a minute. But let's go ahead and look at some of the flow numbers, and I'll show you those because they are really good. And then we'll do some piston tech. 
Here are the flow numbers. Now remember, a big block has a long runner on the intake and a short runner. You can tell it enters the chamber or the cylinder in a different way for each one. So the flow numbers are different for the long runner versus short runner. The exhausts are all the same, so those would be the same. So if we look at this flow numbers, this long runner always flows better. Always does, because if you look at it, it's actually aiming towards the center, while this is aiming towards the wall. So you get the idea. So anyway, let's look at them. The ones I care most about are four, six, and one inch. The one inch, if you're like, no one runs a one inch. I promise you with this head, there are several people running one inch of the valve lifts with these heads, several. However, he is not. It's a street driven 582, spec in the can for it, and I think we're at 780 lift. So uh, definitely not one inch, but you get the idea. Uh, 400 is 330. That's a strong number. You look at uh, most big block heads don't do that. That's a great number. Really good there. 500, 403, also strong. Usually that didn't happen until 6. At 6, we're at 446. And at 7, 476. Um, peaking at 511. So really good. Now, the short runner obviously doesn't do as well. Still 330 at 4. 6, or, you know, 390 almost at 5. 431 at 6. 457 great the exhaust number is also strong flow and peak at 326 213 at four this thing's a really good one now here's what's interesting so this is one of the smaller ones i've done this is one of the bigger ones so this one has a 55 degree seat so it's much larger the port itself way larger um 55 degree seat same size valve so i'm the next set i do i'm going to go that i have to go big on i'm going to go to a much larger intake valve but if you look at their numbers, at 400, they're about the same. 500, this one's actually lower. It's at 600 that really starts shining. 461 versus the 446. But even at peak, it's like you look at 100 or one inch valve lift, 522 versus the 511. So it's only like 10 or so CFM better at the top. Much more area though, great head. The exhaust, it looks like it's worse. So I'll go ahead and warn you why this one's worse. This guy had to run an Inconel exhaust valve and not this exhaust valve and th this thing really should have flowed more but because of the ink canal it wasn't the material of the valve it's the design it had this fat um edge coming off the valve and that's because it's the only blank that was available well it doesn't flow very well at all and obviously it hurt flow because of that stronger valve heavier valve but killed flow anyway so there's the flow numbers for the head very good head so, but anyway, let's actually get to the pistons because I'm sure you guys are kind of curious on that deal. Let's see what we can learn about those. Okay, here are the heads. This is the BRX head, just to give you an idea. 20 degree valve angle, 106 cc chambers. This is your typical, this is an AFR 305 I ported. This is a typical one for it. It's 119 cc's. This is a piston you would run with this. This is a piston to run with this. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind. This piston, what you're about to see, I used in a 540, and with this dome, this volume, on a 540 with a chamber like this, it yielded uh, 11 and a half to 1. With this little dome on a 582, 11.2 to 1. So, we'll talk about that. Here's some things to think about. The larger the cubic inch, the less dome you need to get to the um, compression ratio you want. So obviously being a 540 versus 582, this one's going to take more dome to get the same compression ratio as the bigger engine. However, these heads being 119 cc's, they are considerably larger than this chamber. So because of that, in order to get compression, it's all about volume. You have to make that up. So on this, because it's a conventional head, you have to run much larger dome to get to the compression ratio than you would for this head. So this is the piston that actually goes for it. This one actually came from Diamond. This is, if you look at it, that's all the dome it is. 582, 11 and a half, or 11.2 to one compression ratio with that chamber right there. And remember, if I hadn't softened them, um, this would be like about 97 cc's and this dome would probably be gone altogether. I wouldn't even need it to be flat top on a 582, which is pretty outstanding. That, that, that can't happen with a conventional head in this. Because even if you mill them down, it's really, really, really hard to get down to 106 cc's. Below that's very, very, very tough and almost impossible. These, like I said, 97 is easy. Very hard. So anyway, this is the piston for it. It comes from Diamond. Now this one's actually a custom piston. I'll tell you what's been done to it. They have a shelf version of this, just for the record. But I had to modify some of the things. 
for the record, if you're trying to buy from Diamond and they say it's gonna take uh, two months, you need to add two months onto that and that's when you actually get your piston. So don't, don't believe what they say when you're gonna get it, you need to add two months on. But here's what the piston is. So it's a nice forging and it's got a really deep valve pocket, like 345 deep. So it's good for you know most cams. Uh, this one's a little bit different because if you look, it actually has a positive step out on the valve because when you do the soft chambers, uh, you have to sink the valve in, the valve job down, so you get some top cut, which I'm not doing a good job of showing. But um, it makes it look like it's sticking out because it's been removed. If it, this hadn't been milled, it would be just barely sticking out above the deck. And that's actually common with the BRXs to have some of the margins sticking out. In other words, it's positive as far as your free drop because of that. It's not the end of the world. Just letting you know, it looks worse than what it is. It's only because there's material move comes of the CNC softening. However, the deep pockets on this allow a lot of room. I do like their pistons because if you notice, and this is a good thing to look forward to, most people, when they do a valve notch, it looks something like this. Now, in all fairness, these are malls, but this I had sent off to have it cut for a bigger um, radius so I can run a bigger intake valve because the mall piston by itself only can use a 2300. I had them cut so I could use a 2375, so this is how it looks. However, many pistons look just like this. See this sharp edge all the way here? This is nice. The rounded radius really does help one flow and two, it doesn't create as much hot spots. That's a good deal. Now, the reason why it's custom too is because they have a shelf piston for this, but it's like 15 two to one compression ratio. And it's got a much bigger dome. The dome looks something like this as compared to something like this. I said, man, I just need, you know, positive five cc should be where I need to be. Um, can you do that? Yep, yeah, sure thing. So that's why the dome's that way. The other thing that made it different is when the shelf piston that they have, um, they have a different gas port, and I'll get to talk about that. There are two types of gas ports. These are lateral. See those holes right there? And they're all the way through it, but you can kind of see there, there, but the biggest one's easy to see is right there. These are called lateral gas ports. And what the purpose of them is, is the air will come, because there's still clearance between here and the cylinder wall, the air will come around, go into that hole and actually push on the back of the ring, forcing it out against the cylinder and the ring seal better. These are worth it. On any engine I do, they have these in them, with the exception of the engine that just was done by Nyes, and I think it's because I forgot to tell them. All my other engines have this done. They all have lateral gas ports. For instance, this is the piston that was in the 540 that ran an engine masters. If you look, they have them. Now, just for the record, they don't come that way from the factory. So there's a company called Rebco and they're in Wichita, Kansas. You can send your pistons off and he charges about 120 for the, do the whole set and they'll put them in there. No big deal, easy thing. This is easily worth about 15 horsepower. So for 120 bucks, 15 horsepower, you bet it's worth it. So anyway, those are those. These are laterals. When you get the one that's out of the shell, out of the box, they have something called a vertical gas port. So instead of the holes being drilled here, like you see, what they are is they're drilled straight down all the way around up here. And those actually work better for sealing because as the piston's coming up, it's forcing the air directly into the back of the ring and pushing it out. Here's the disadvantage. On a street deal, carbon builds up, obviously, and they will block off those holes. So they become less effective the longer it's running. So these don't get clogged with carbon because you have carbon all the way around here. So that's not an issue on the lateral. On the vertical ones, it does. They just get clogged. So yes, it's better, um, but they clog up. Some, and I don't do it, but some people run both. I don't do it. That's where they'll have the vertical ones and the lateral ones. I'm not for that. I will warn you too, that sometimes it, how good they are and who put this in, uh, really makes a difference. So having your local guy, he might be really good at it. But the thing to avoid is the thinnest part of the piston is usually right here. So you want to make sure your lateral gas port's not there because that makes it real easy for it to crack and break. So just something to keep in mind. So there's that part of the piston, but let's turn it around and look at something else. The rings. These have an 043 ring, which as technology has come a long way, the one thing that's really changed is the thickness of the rings. So when I first started, most of them had 564 rings, which are huge. So, and now they're down to, like these are 043 millimeter or 043 inches um, compared to some of the stuff's even smaller. I've seen some of them like 24 thousands, which is really, really small. 
So the, having the rings thinner um, really does help them seal up. They're able to scrape against the cylinder better and a little bit of, they just do things better with having it thinner. The thicker ones don't, they just aren't as well. So that's come a long way from what they have been. Just to give you an idea, these are 1.5 millimeter. So they're not, they're bigger than that. So the smaller rings do help it seal. So here's something else though I do wanna show you though. This is, a, you should definitely do. This is the second ring that comes with these pistons that I got. And I don't know if this camera's gonna capture it all. It's gonna to be tough to see, almost impossible. It doesn't look like it's gonna catch it. This is the second ring. So it actually goes in the second spot. This is the, the second ring does for both oil and compression. But the thing you should order is something called a Napier. And hopefully you can see it right there. Oh, I just moved it, of course. See that little, looks like a little groove here. My thumb's trying to capture it right through there. That's the Napier part. What that is, it's a cut in the actual, um, you can see it there if you look real good. That's a cut in the pit, in the ring itself. And it acts like a hook. And what happens is when that hook, it will scrape the sides of the cylinder, scraping off the oil as the piston goes down. And it's like a double wiper, you could think of it, to scrape off the oil from the cylinders so that it doesn't get into the um, cylinder and cause contamination issues and what, or in the combustion chamber cause contamination issues. These I highly recommend. So if you ever have second rings, do the Napier. That's that little hook, you could see it there pretty good. You, highly recommend it. So if you're getting rings, get to make sure you get the second ring as Napier. The top ring really depends on more what you're doing. So if you're more in boosted application, it should be different than an NA application because uh, there's different strengths of the rings and whatnot. But on the second rings, Napier, almost always you should do. So just something to keep in mind. Now, one more thing about these pistons itself I was gonna talk about, they are coated. So this is an anti-friction coating that they put on the skirts. Malls has about the same thing, as you can tell it's got some wear. They have theirs too, but then this is another design thing. I'm gonna flip this piston over and this piston over. This is more of a traditional design. I don't know the exact name, they keep changing it, it feels like, versus this one. I actually like this design better. The JE pistons that are in the 565 and the Camaro look more like this. These are some, I think they've called them X designs or box designs, even though that's more of a box. I don't know, they've got different names. They, I see them called different things. But I like this design better than this for a reason. This one's really common. You've got a nice support over the, you know, the thrust areas of the piston, which are great. And these do too, but they flare out and they've got, you know, bosses that hold it. But here's the advantage. If you look at this, that pin has to go from here to here, your wrist pin. For these, the pin's much narrower. And because the pin's narrower, there's less weight on the actual rotating part of the engine. So the piston's coming up and that weight's still pulling on the rod. This one ends up much heavier. So there's more stress on the rod because it being heavier versus this. I like this design better than that. However, this is not bad, it's just not my favorite. But there's that. You can order them that way, I just didn't. Because it's gonna get insanely expensive for a pump gas deal. So and this will be more than adequate for what he's doing. And this will probably work for engines making over, you know, easily over 1200, probably be fine here too. I just prefer this design just because it keeps the weight down. So besides moving the pin in, the piston itself usually weighs less too. However, these pistons are pretty light. These are, I mean, if you look at them, they're, they're not that heavy and they're nice forging, should be great. But anyway, hopefully that gives you more stuff to think about as far as all this goes and um, should be a really good deal. For those who are like, man, that head's way too big for a 582, even a pump gas deal. It is along the little larger side, but I'm also doing the camshaft board. I can promise you the duration is nothing. And it's gonna rev to the moon, even with the small duration that it's gonna have. This thing should be really, really nice. So easily he's gonna hit his goal. He wanted 900 you know, on it, and this is gonna be no problem at all. Actually, I think he wanted 800, well over that. So this would be a really, really good deal. So anyway, um, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you got something out of the video. Hope I gave you some things to think about with your pistons. So try to get the thinnest you can afford for rings. Nape here a second ring and for sure do the gas ports. If you already got pistons, send them in the Red Co. in Wichita, Kansas. It's worth the money. Anyway, good heads, good pistons. Remember, I'm no Superman and you guys take care.